All right, what's up people? Welcome back. So today we're gonna do the how much does it cost video. So I've been wanting to do this for a long time and kind of like the whole mission of the vehicle, the whole swap thing was to do, again, a budget build. So I got sucked into the budget builds. I like doing it and I like trying to find a cheap way or a reasonable way to do something that I can present to other people and hopefully they can do something similar someday. So a little history on the car, I guess this thing was a, 2004 350Z, I mean it still is a 2004 350Z, believe it or not. And I found this thing on Craigslist one day. So wanted to get something for me and my wife and we were kind of looking at drifting and considering getting into drifting or autocross, something that we could do that's like a driving sport and we could spend some time together driving. So we were searching around, we decided we both like 350Zs, which is very, very hard for me and my wife to like agree on anything. So especially cars. So two cars that we have agreed on in life is the 350Z and uh, 57 Chevy Bel Air. So that are, that's one that we still wanna get down the road, but this is what we agreed on. And she liked the color. I don't really think I like it that much. We got a really good deal on the car. It had a built VQ in it, like built with receipts. The guy I got the car from bought it from the guy who originally built it. And the guy who originally built it did a very good job on the car. Had receipts for everything, did a very good job on it. But transmission was bad. Six gear was junk. So we drove it around. Six gear, not really that big of a deal, but I eventually grenaded third gear and that was a little bit harder to drive. So took the car out of commission and then my natural, natural wildlife instincts kicked in and just decided to throw a V8 in it. So I'm familiar with the V8s, the Chevy LS V8s, GM bullshit and the tuning and whatever. So it was kind of a comfort zone thing to put a different engine in there. Typically the kits are really expensive. So I wanted to do something different and try to do it as cheap as possible and show people that there's another way. So this is kind of where we're at now. I have it in there. I don't really have like intake or anything on there, but I do have an intake elbow and everything would fit fine. So everything's in, runs, drives, still got some things to button up, but this is basically bare bones swap right now. So there's still some of the gauges that don't work. I do have all of the gauges working that will work without CAN bus. Like the speedometer still works. The oil pressure gauge is going to work when I hook that up, but there's some other gauges and stuff that don't work until we come up with a CAN bus solution, but this is pretty much where we're at. So let's get into the fun stuff. How much did it cost? So I'll start by saying I did sell the engine out of the car. So that is kind of what really helped kickstart the whole thing. Um, transmission was bad, I was buying a new one. Decided just to throw the thing on eBay and threw the built VQ on eBay and I have receipts for it. There was like over $6,000 in receipts for just the engine build and it had a $6,000 supercharger kit on it. So that was pretty good considering I paid $7,500 for the entire car. So I ended up selling the engine with the supercharger kit on it on eBay for about $6,000. After fees and everything like that, I ended up walking away from the deal with about five. So that's pretty much where we're starting, five. Um, let's get started on what I spent because we bought things. So the engine was 500. I paid 500 for the engine and I guess I'll just go, kind of go through things and point them out as I see them. I'm going to keep my little cheat sheet with me. So we got 500 for the engine and I didn't use the truck intake as you can see. So I did buy the intake. That was 220 paid for the intake and I just used the truck throttle body and I used the uh, like a Lockar throttle cable that was 60 bucks and I built all the brackets for it built pretty much all, there's a lot of stuff I built on here so China rails these were like 66 and I built the entire accessory drive so the accessory drive you can see it's like basically just flat stock steel so I have like $17 into this whole accessory drive including a different tensioner so I reused some of the factory bolts a lot of the the bolts in here are just like AC bracket bolts and the bolts that came along with it so a lot of that stuff is all reused I did end up buying a different power steering pump, so I paid like 35 bucks for that thing because I sent the other one with the engine. I left everything 
bolted on just as it was so I ended up buying a different one of those and mounted this thing up so you can see the one of the idler pulleys that's just off of a it's a truck idler I use the Silverado truck alternator I did buy a Camaro LS1 crank pulley and water pump so the crank pulley was 60 the water pump was 57 wire harness I made the wire harness I basically did the standalone myself uh, I have a video on that but I bought the harness originally for $27 so that I found a guy on Facebook and watches the channel he sold me this harness for $27 it was missing a couple plugs so I had to solder those back on but good price for that and it didn't cost me anything to rework it. Oil filter relocation kit, I paid basically $70 for that. That's a little dusty and dirty, but bought everything separately. This is a Transdapt uh, remote oil plate. Here's the part number and box on that thing. So just did that uh, and then bought all the other fittings for it and bought the line separately. So I bought the fitting separately, the line separately, and then I bought a little a plate that attaches to the side of the engine that has two dash 10 fittings coming out of it. So that uh, remote filter plate was like $22 and that thing works pretty good. This this gauge that I put on here was just off of an old um, fuel pressure regulator that I'm not using so I just pulled that thing off. What I did with the exhaust I just used the factory truck manifolds and then welded some two and a half inch tubing down to the factory exhaust. So that's just how I did it there. I mean, I don't know how long I'm gonna keep all this jazz here, but that's how I did it. Two and a half inch tubing, just pie cut down and attached to the factory exhaust. And that's what it, that's what it runs with. Did get this remote bleeder, bleeder line for the clutch. And this was $30. And while we're talking about the clutch, it's using a GM T56 slave cylinder that came with the Collins adapter kit that I bought. So the slave cylinder and the Collins adapter together with the kit, uh, everything ready to go was $9.50, like including shipping. So that is what I'm using to adapt the LS engine to the CD09 transmission. If you're not familiar with the Collins kit, it's basically this big aluminum plate right here. You cut the bell housing off the CD09 and then you bolt the plate on and then you bolt the bell housing onto the transmission. That stuff was like $9.50 like I said. The clutch setup was $3.93. And the next thing is the oil pan. So the oil pan took me quite a while to do it. One of the other things that I should add was a challenge that I accepted during this project was that most people are saying that you cannot or should not use the factory length drive shaft and factory shift point with the Collins adapter. So the engine is shifted a little bit farther forward than some of the other kits like the Siki kit, the LOJ kit, the fueled racing kit, they all sit back a little bit farther. Uh, the fueled racing kit I believe is the farthest kit backwards and the farthest forward is uh, like the CX racing and the Siki kits. So there's quite a few other kits that you can buy but they're pretty expensive. So kind of took on the challenge of how do you do it with retaining the factory transmission, shift point, and drive shaft? But because I decided that I was going to take on that challenge of trying to retain all the other stuff, I had to build the oil pan. There's no oil pan that is designed to work with the engine in this position, or not one that I found. I think I found a couple that are close, but they're still like $200 plus for those oil pans. The ones that are designed for this swap are $600 to $900 for the oil pan, pickup tube, and oil filter relocation. So I was not gonna pay $900 to buy an oil pan when a fucking TIG welder is $1,000. So that's what I did. I bought a TIG welder and kind of taught myself how to TIG weld so I could build the oil pan. I've been wanting a TIG welder for like the last three or four years and just never really had a project that I felt like I needed one. So this kind of justified uh, pushing me over the edge to actually get one and now I have a new tool and working on a new skill out of the project so it did take a while to do it it was a big learning curve and I it's kind of working right now so that's good so this is essentially what I ended up doing uh, a subscriber uh, someone I'm friends with on Facebook also sent me this oil pan Cooper you are awesome thank you again for this oil pan sent me the oil pan 
free. He didn't even charge me shipping or anything. Just sent it because he knew I was going to build one and was like, hey dude, I want to help you and sent me this thing. So what I did was I cut the top off and I used the flange. I kept about an inch and a half of the top flange for a little bit of support and I used the flange and then I used this big sheet of 3 16 aluminum and cut this thing up and built and designed an oil pan. So so it, it, was a, it was a challenge and I learned a little bit and I'll try to insert a picture in here and it, it seems like it's working pretty well. I did pressure test it. It leaked a bunch of times and then I went back over and re-welded and this and that and it seems like it's doing okay and actually holding oil. So mm, we may have a success. It may be a win. So that one seems like maybe not as much of a DIY type thing but that's just my kind of personality. I enjoy building stuff. I enjoy learning stuff and it was something that I wanted to take on. I knew it would be challenging and I enjoy doing it. So uh, if it doesn't work and it blows up and leaks, the engine blows up and stuff, whatever happens tomorrow, I don't really care either way. I enjoyed the project. As far as I'm concerned, this project could be done and I'll start something new tomorrow and not even give it a second thought. So really depends on the person. So you can buy the kits, but the transmission ends up being back a little bit farther and then you end up having to buy a drive shaft, you end up having to buy or modify somehow the transmission mount and the shift point. So I didn't want to do any of that. This car right now has the factory drive shaft, factory transmission shift point, factory shifter. So basically nothing was modified to make all of this work the way that it, it should be. The only downside is the engine is slightly more forward and girls don't like you and dinosaurs kick you in the head and shit. So it's pretty bad. So the rest of it is like all little stuff like the heater, the heater tube down there that kind of loops the tubes around. I paid like 10 bucks for that thing. When I was talking about the fuel rails is the injector hat. So right now I'm using the factory truck style injectors because this is a truck motor. So I'm still using the truck injectors and I bought the little the little uh, aluminum piece on top, the little hats. Those things were $30 and all that's doing is spacing out the truck injector for the LS1 rail setup. So that was 30 bucks. And if we go in my secret hole right here, uh, I did also change the master cylinder out. So that was $50 for that thing. And I changed that out because it wasn't enough to factory one wasn't enough to actually disengage the clutch. So one other thing with the, the engine being farther forward is the fitment issue. There's obviously a fitment issue with the radiator and the other kits. They're a lot more expensive but they're designed to work with the factory radiator placement. So the only way that only thing I had to do basically to get around that was I moved the radiator forward a little bit. So if you look at this bracket here this is approximately where the radiator was going to be and I moved it forward a couple inches and down a little bit. So I just built a bracket, I just bent up some square tubing here and used the factory AC condenser mounting point and welded up some brackets here to get the radiator to hang. So this is a Mishimoto radiator that was already on the car when I bought it and kept the fans and everything there. So, and I drove it around the other day and let it idle in the garage after I was driving it for about an hour and it only got up to 194 after I was letting it sit. So it does pretty good just like this. Radiator hose. This is one of the ones that was already on there when I bought it. This is the top Mishimoto radiator hose. And then the bottom radiator hose is just a top radiator hose from like a Silverado truck that I put on the bottom. And I have videos on all of this stuff, guys. If you're new to the channel and you didn't see any of it, I have videos of doing every single thing on this car. All right, so let's go through, let's go through the list. Trans, I didn't talk about the trans. We got engine, trans, Collins adapter, clutch, oil pan, bung. The, I added a oil pan bung, like a drain bung, so that was 10 bucks. Cooler plate, remote bleeder, power steering pump, water pump, crank pulley, fuel rail fittings, injector hats, Remote oil system, intake, mass throttle cable, heater tube, the little loop tube, engine mounts, accessory drive, and harness and computer. So the thing I didn't talk about was the engine mounts. The engine mounts, uh, I have it on the sheet for $40 because $10 of that was just a sh bunch of flat stock that I bought or like one little strip of flat stock that I bought at the hardware store and I welded up the brackets. And all I did was attach them to 
the factory mount. So here's an example of the factory mount. I guess you could count another $16 if you include this, but I dropped the engine on it when I was test fitting it and ripped this mount. So I ended up buying a different one, so you could add 16 bucks if you wanted. But what's in the car right now is a total of $40. I bought two new rubber pieces because I sold them with the engine. When I shipped it, I used the mounts to actually put it in a crate and wanted to package it up nicely so it was sitting on the mounts inside the crate. So I sold those and bought different ones. Those were $30, the flat stock was 10. And I'll try to insert a picture because you can't really see them, but it's basically just some flat stock chopped up and then welded to the top of the frickin' engine mount. So I think that's about it. And there may be some additional cost in there that I'm missing, like for nuts and bolts and hardware and junk and just random stuff. But we got two different prices here. So I'm gonna say $39.33 was the total cost that I spent, but if I didn't have to buy the transmission, it would be about $27.40. So if I do the math on everything, it comes out to about $2,740. So I don't think that's too bad, under $3,000. That would be if you did everything exactly like I did it here. So one of the other things that I didn't count there is the cost of the transmission. So the $2,700 is not including, $2,740 is not including the cost of the transmission. So if you were to do this swap on yours and you just did the Collins kit, modified your transmission, your transmission was still good, you wouldn't have the additional $1,200 cost that I spent for the transmission. I got this CD09, it was a 5,000 mile CD09 for 1,200. I don't think that was too bad, but I did have to buy one because my transmission was already junk. So that brings my total cost that I spent to like 3,900. So still under 4,000, but you, if you did it like this, would be under three under 28 so that's where i'm at guys uh, i just wanted to share it go through the cost breakdown and hopefully you guys out there can start doing some cheap ls swaps in these 350z's because i think the vehicle is still kind of a newer vehicle so not a lot of people are doing it there's people doing it but they're doing it for a high cost they're not really people usually people that are doing it to this type of vehicle are spending a bunch of money to do the swaps so there you go a cheap swap.